Hey, it's winter time, but it's not too cold for fishing. Let's talk about some techniques to catch some cold water bass. Hey everyone, thanks for stopping back by the channel. Hey, for today's episode, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I thought I would talk about some techniques and some baits that I use for catching cold water bass. It's that time of year, it's cold, the water is really cooled down here in Virginia. We're looking at really low temperatures coming up next week, but it doesn't stop me from getting out fishing. And one of the things that I really like about wintertime bass fishing, it's time to catch big bass. You can really catch big bass in the wintertime. Um, so I'm gonna share with you three of my lures that I recommend to you guys to try to catch big bass in the wintertime. Now everybody has their favorites, these are just three that I think really work well to catch big bass in the winter time. And we know during the winter, the bass go deeper. They are more lethargic. They don't chase as much. They do still chase, but they don't, you won't find them, you know, chasing in bat or, you know, schooling shad and things of that nature. So you got to find baits that get down to them and present something for them for a large meal, especially big bass in the winter. You got to put something by them that's big, that they can grab real easy, they don't waste a lot of energy, and fill them up quick. So the first thing I'm gonna recommend to everybody um, that I like to fish is the swim bait. And this is an eight inch Easy Shiner big swim bait. Um, this I think is in the Shiner color. Whatever color you use as forge in your lake, if it's the perch color, Shiner color, um, whatever whatever uh, the bait fish are in your lake, I just get a big color to match that. It doesn't have to be the easy shiner. Uh, this is just what I have, uh, but a big swim bait. And what I used to rig the swim bait with was an eight aught owner brute hook. It's got the screw in head, and I'll show you real quick how I rigged that up. Just take the screw in real quick. You screw that in the end, and then you get it towards the bottom. Take that eight aught hook right in the fold there, right up through the middle. There you go. Perfectly rigged swim bait. Now this has a half ounce sinker on the bottom. I like that because I want this swim bait to be down in the water column and swimming really slow. Now this eight inch swim bait itself sinks really well, but when you pair it with this half ounce weight on this, on this hook setup, it really gets the bait down there slow. The paddle tail is really wagging to, to give it a little bit of action, not a lot of action. What I do with this is I throw it out over deep points um, or over where I think bass are hanging out in some timber or something of that nature in deeper water. And I reel this really slow, really slow. This half ounce weight and the size of the bait itself, keep it down there. I can get this down 18, 20, 24 feet if I need to. Now, sometimes I'll give it a little pump not a big pump with my rod, just a small pump with the rod to give it a little bump um, in the water column to maybe uh, spark a bite or so, but really slow roll this um, bait in down into deeper water where you think bass are, where you know bass are. It's a really good, effective, big bass bait. Uh, they jump on these big swim baits in the middle of winter when they come by them really slow, have a little bit of action, um, you'll be surprised you can catch a monster on this big spinner, uh, this big uh, swim bait. Um, again, half ounce weight, eight on eight aught uh, owner brute hook is what I use on that. And you know, you put it right in the middle. It's not perfectly weedless, but it's a good, you don't have to really worry about weeds in the winter time, but it's a good bait setup. And you want a good wide gap hook because this is a meaty swim bait. When you set the hook, you really want the hook to be able to get into the bass. So, um, Really good, highly recommend a big swim bait. This is an eight inch uh, Kitek Easy Shiner on an eight, eight aught hook with a half ounce belly weight on it. Really good um, bait to catch a big monster bass on in the winter time. So my second bait that I highly recommend in the winter time, and a lot of you probably go, doesn't surprise me for Shane to say this. My second recommendation is a big spinner bait. What I have here is a Booyah spinner bait. It's a one ounce spinner bait, and it has a number six willow blade and a number four Colorado blade. And why such a big spinner bait? Because you can keep it down. 
Not only does the head heavy and lets it get, you know, sink quicker, but the bigger blades will drag enough that you can slow roll it and spin it slow enough you can keep that bait at 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 feet, however you can you know, slow roll it down, but you are slow rolling this spinner bait. Just enough to get that thump, 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 thump feel on the end of your rod. And you know your rod position matters when you slow roll. When you have your high, rod tip high, the bait's gonna track upwards. You want your rod tip low where the, the bait will you know, track lower and straighter towards the boat and give you a, a deeper profile. I usually pair this with a Mr. Twister white grub. Um, what I've been typically doing lately, and I'm probably gonna do this in the winter, I've went to a paddle tail, a bruiser bait, a swim bait, and white with the paddle tail because it's just a little less action. I think that'll work really well for the winter and it'll give it some more meaty look um, in the hook profile, bigger profile as, of a bait. It's a big profile as it is. The vibration, the flash, and a bulky look coming by a bass real slow, um, you will catch a big bass on this. Last year, my big bass of the year, I caught in December on a spinnerbait, eight pounds. So big bass bait, slow rolled off points around submerged timber, wherever, where the water's deep, where you know bass are hanging out in the wintertime. Um, and if you don't know where they're hanging out in the wintertime, if, if you got good electronics, you can usually find them. Um, but I'd go deep points, deep ledges, rip wraps, places where rock, where the sunlight hits rock and heats the water sometimes, helps you locate bass as well. So number two recommended bait, big one ounce spinner bait. Your color, I got this in chartreuse and white. I like blue, yellow, and white is another one of my favorite colors um, with, a, with a white curly tail tra trailer or a paddle tail trailer. Really good bait. And then my third bait that I'd recommend is just a staple for wintertime fishing, and that is the jig. Um, this is a DNL Pro Series jig. I fish these in a half ounce or a three eight ounce, three eighths ounce. Three eighths particularly is what I usually use because it's still get a slow fall. The half ounce, of course, you're going to get is a heavier bait, so get a get a uh, a faster fall. Um, but what I like to pair this with is a big profile um, bait. And this is a Jean LaRue Biffle Bug. And you can see it's bulky, it's meaty, and I like this meaty uh, look in a bait. It just looks bigger. I feel like the bass want to jump on that because it's a, a bulkier looking fish or bulkier looking bait. Um, everybody has their own preference, but I think a bulkier bait uh, is uh, something that you're gonna catch bigger bass on, especially in the winter. And when you're bouncing this around the ledges, around timber or whatever, now I still have a weed guard on here, even though you don't have to worry about weeds per se in the winter, but you're still gonna fish around timber, around rocks, and this weed guard will help you a lot to uh, eliminate some snags and hookups or hangups. So the Biffle Bugs one, I'll show you how I hook that up. I just go right down the middle there and um, run it up the hook there. And voila, there is my jig. What we, when I was a kid, I referred to as a jig and pig. You know, you use Uncle Josh pork rinds. We don't, they still have them now, but not as common. And with these, with these good plastics now, you really don't need it. You know, these have flappy legs on it. Not as much of a big deal. The action is important, but not that important in the winter time because bass aren't, bass are just looking for something bulky to eat. Another one of my favorites to throw on here, um, and I found these last year when I started fishing with the Kitek Easy Shiners was the high tech crazy flapper. You can see how big and bulky that is, and it's got a lot of tentacles. These are all, you can pull them apart. Um, and this is a good pumpkin and chartreuse green color that go with a good green jig. Um, I, I like it. I, I cut, I kind of pair that, cut that down a little bit. Here's, here's the one I was fishing with on this jig last year in catching bass. You can see I pared it down some, cut it down some, but you know, got a little bit of action, still got that bulky look in the jig. Um, I just think the key with the jig is that you fish it slow, but you're gonna fish slow in the winter time, and then give that, that jig a big bulky profile. Um, now, I used to use a Jean LaRue salt crawl. This is what this is here, but you know, it's kind of thin and long, and when you pair it on there, it's not as, I don't think it's as enticing as this, you know, these bulkier baits. So that's what I prefer. Um, what color? Uh, green pumpkin, uh, brown, black, uh, black and blue. I think black and blue is my number two color. Um, black, uh, brown with an orangish bait like this 
is good. Uh, something I do recall when I was a kid, when going out and you know shivering on the aluminum boat with my dad in the winter time, is he always fished a black jig with a red uh, Uncle Josh split tail pork rind. I know they still make Uncle, they make Uncle Josh now. I don't know if they have the red ones, but maybe I'll try that black and red because I always caught big bass in the winter time on that setup. Um, but you know, know your conditions, know your water. Um, you know what colors work best in your lake. But I think green pumpkin, black and blue, brown and orange um, are some really good colors to use. Trailers to kind of match, or you know, you want to contrast the trailers depending on where you're at. But um, jig is a very, very good bait. Fishing it deep around rocks, around timber, um, in that deeper water, in that 18 to 26, could even be 30 feet, you, depending on what lake you're in. Unless you're down in Florida at Keatonsville where it's four foot average, you don't have to worry about slow fishing in the winter. Um, you wanna get that, that jig down there slow, bump it around. And one of the things that I you know, distinctly have to tell myself in the winter time is a lot of times you don't just get that big chunk bite on a jig. Sometimes they just kind of suck it up and just move slow. So you got to watch your line when you're jig fishing in the winter and be ready to set the hook when your, your line moves off, um, you know, kind of slowly. Sometimes that's the big one. Well, there's the three baits that uh, I wanted to share with you that I hope that you can go out and catch some big bass in the wintertime. If you're, you know, up north and it freezes over, um, I hope you're out there at least ice fishing or getting out there and having fun in the outdoors. If you're some of my friends down in Florida, I know you're out there pounding it out now and for bass, you know, the bass are gonna spawn in the next month or so and the crop you're gonna start biting. Uh, good luck down there. But if you're up here in Virginia in the middle of America where you can still go out there and fish, I get out there as long as there's not ice forming on the water. Um, I think these are three baits um, that you can get out there and catch big bass in the middle of winter. I hope it works out for you. So if you like this content, give me, hit the old thumbs up. And until next time, uh, tight lines and good luck fishing.